Now let's talk things over with uh, Sox Center head coach Mike Ellens. Well, coach, the first stat I'd look at is 10 missed free throws. That hurts. That hurts a lot. You know, I mean, really, we make some of our free throws. A whole different situation at the end of the game where we're not fouling. We're maybe the team that's up, and they're fouling us. It changes the game so dramatically. And, you know, they miss some bunnies. We miss some bunnies. I think we both like to have a lot of those back. Um, but you know what? The ball's got to fall through the hoop when you play defense as hard as both teams did. And, and it just wasn't for either team, really, when it comes down to it. And uh, 10 missed free throws really hurts a lot, though. I'll have to say some of the things to you that, that I said to Melrose Coach Dusha. That was a fight out there tonight, wasn't it? These it was. wanted it. It was. You could tell both teams really wanted it bad. Um, both teams were willing to make every defensive stop the most important stop of their lives. Um, and that's really what we did tonight. We just said that, you know what, the first possession, the last possession that Melrose has are equally as important. You know, we need stops. And really, I felt the kids were doing just that. With the score as low as it was, 38-33, to 33, Sox Center had such long possessions. I don't know how many passes you guys threw. It seemed like 20 passes on a possession. You know, the last time we played, we actually were just firing up everything after the first pass. And tonight, I told the guys we had to have patience. I did not tell them we're stalling with the ball, but we were going to show more patience. And, and that's one of the keys to our game is, is, you know what, we showed a lot of patience, kind of kept the score at a range where maybe we could possibly score with them. Um, it's just too bad the ball didn't fall through the hoop, I guess, to, to reward us with some of our patience. You know, we seem to get some good shots at the end of things. It's just that they wouldn't fall. I want to highlight the play of Tanner Schmeezy because I thought he, well, he's a big guy, and he came up big here tonight. Can you uh, kind of mention some of the things that he was doing out there? Because, again, I look at him, and he really battled against this team tonight. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Melrose got barely any second shots today, and most of that was Tanner Schmeezing, and Simon Weller did a good job, too, on there. Um, but Tanner Schmeezing was just huge. And then Tanner Schmeezing was clearing some space down low and really making their post defend him. You know, it, it kind of kept Melrose from being able to switch on their screen and things like that because they had to defend Tanner down low every time too and and uh, you know he's just such a nice body out there that you know you you, you got to have him on the floor. I really like what you're doing with the Sox Center team man to man and jumping on that uh, high pick and roll you come out really hard don't you? Absolutely you know we're not letting them get anywhere off that pick and roll and then our help defense has been great you know I mean because anytime you jump a pick like that Obviously, you better have some guys down low helping out. And, and uh, you know, we've really been doing a good job with our help and help the helper. Beginning of the year, we weren't doing so well, and that's why we kind of struggled early on. Another player, too, to highlight, I think, is the sophomore, Cade Newbert. He was impactful tonight. He's a flashy kid out there, isn't he? I'll tell you what. There was one time he caught it about the three-point line, and he sped right by two Melrose players for a layup. Could have been an and one, and he missed the free throw. But I'll tell you what, that was the quickest longest two steps I've ever seen out of a kid. Yeah, very good. But he, he has that kind of talent, doesn't he? I think sometimes, though, he's still kind of learning the game a little bit, isn't he? Absolutely. You know, I mean, we, we have to remember that he's a sophomore at all times and, and take some good with the bad, um, you know, because he's going to have a lot of good, but he's also going to have some sophomore mistakes, I would call him, because sometimes he's just thinking a little bit more like a sophomore and, and not really, you know, like, like he should as a varsity player, but at the same time, you got to keep in mind that he is just a sophomore, and I got him for another couple of years, which is awesome. I'm sure you and the team have to look at this as, all right, they took this one, they took us before, but let's get them again in the playoffs, and I'm sure you kind of uh, relish that chance to get these guys again. First thing I said when we got to the locker room, Mark, is, you know what, I hope we get to see these guys again because I, I like our chances. Um, obviously, it's going to be a tough, big battle, you know, at St. John's. If we see them again, it'll probably be at St. John's. Um, and so, you know what, uh, it, it'll be fun. Um, it's hard to beat a team three times, I always believe, and so I guess Melrose will have to prove themselves on that night. And maybe a final note here, too. Great energy from the crowd here tonight for this game, wasn't it? You can't ask for a better environment, Mark. You know, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, um, you had cheering from both sides, a um, lot of people from both sides. Melrose versus Sox Center on a Friday night. I mean, like I told the guys, this is the stuff when you're a little kid, you're living for, you're dreaming of, and you know what? Their dreams got to come true tonight and play this game.